Hi friends, this is Shrikas Srinivasan for shishap.net, programmers.com. In this video, we will try to understand the basic structure of Shishap program and we will try to understand what is namespace and we will try to observe with a simple demo how to write a Shishap program, compile and execute it. Then we will try to understand what is the compile time phase and runtime phase of a C sharp program. Then we will try to understand the usage of intermediate language disassembler and intermediate language assembler. Now to make ourselves comfortable with the structure of a C sharp program. A C sharp program starts with the comments where we use comments to specify the details about the program. What for this program meant? What this program is going to perform? Or what are the functionalities this code is going to execute? We try to write the comments. And once we specify the comments, we try to use a using namespace hierarchy. When we use any of the members which belongs to the .NET, or else if you have written any of your own class libraries to use the members directly we take the support of using namespace hierarchy once we specify this then we take the support of namespace namespace name within that we try to write a class class name so that we can maintain a hierarchy within it the entry point of a c -sharp program starts with the main where the main return type may be void or integer. It may accept some kind of strings as a parameters or may not. Within the main method, we will try to write the statements and we try to close the application. Now, when we try to understand the namespace, we can assume that a namespace is a collection of classes maintained in a hierarchy such that the class definitions can be accessed easily and also it avoids class name collisions. For example, when I say that the namespace helps in maintaining the classes in a hierarchy. For example, say that I want to work with console applications, then we can take the support of system.console. When you say that I want to develop a web application, then we take the hierarchy like system.web.ui and if it is for a Windows application, we can take the support of system.windows.forms. It becomes easy for a programmer to use the classes based on the requirement. Namespaces not only maintains the classes in a hierarchy, it also helps in avoiding the class name ambiguity. For example, when I say that I need some class with the name called as class1 with two different methods, for example, method1 and method2. I wanted to have both the functionalities of method1 and method2. And the name of the classes which I require is class1 only. I cannot maintain the classes in the same level. So with the support of namespaces, we can maintain two different hierarchies such that a root namespace, a sub namespace, within that I can maintain a class one. And root namespace, sub namespace two, and within that another class one. So that the users can use different hierarchies like root namespace, sub namespace one, class one to access the method one root namespace sub namespace to class 1 to access the method 2. Now let's try to understand with a simple demo how to start a C sharp program, compile the program and execute the program. Now let me try to open visual studio.net. In order to create a new console application, I simply say file menu new project. Once I selected file menu new project under the installed templates as we are going to work with C sharp application I select visual C sharp 
as it is going to be a console application i select console application once i selected console application let me try to provide a meaningful name saying that cs intro once i provided the name i just click on okay by default my visual studio dot net will try to provide the complete structure of a c sharp console application if you can just try to recollect i already provided the structure where we start with a comment the using namespace hierarchy a namespace a class and a entry point that's going to be our main method to understand it properly let me just try to remove everything and let's try to write a basic program to understand the structure my first c sharp program in order to use the console applications or to work with console application we need to use a class called as console where console is a class which is present within a namespace called test system in order to access the console class directly i try to use a statement called as using system and to maintain the programs in a proper manner we take the support of a namespace and i give a name for the namespace as cs intro and within the cs intro i would like to write a simple program say class program where i would like to provide the entry point entry point is the place where the execution of your application starts and for a c sharp program the entry point is going to be a main method in order to write an entry point i simply say static void main if we wanted to take some command line arguments we can take the arguments else we can ignore it i can simply say static void main and there is a class provided to work with console application which is called as console class where we have a method called as write line in order to write the information on the console so to do this i simply specify welcome to c sharp work once this particular program is written then what we try to do is let's try to execute and check out if i wanted to execute this program i simply say project menu c sharp intro properties the startup object i just specify the name of the namespace dot the class name and to execute it i just use control plus f5 so that it runs in a debug mode till you press a key the result will be halted so i just written a simple message to say welcome to c sharp world now once we have observed how we have written a program and executed the program now let's try to understand the compile time phase of a c sharp program we have written a program with a name called as program.cs now say that we are trying to compile this particular program in order to compile this program we use a compiler with a name called as csc program.cs csc is the compiler which is used to compile our c sharp applications and program.cs is our program name once the program has been compiled we get a file called as program.exe which we call it as il intermediate language or an assembly and once the assembly has been provided then this assembly will be passed to the clr which is our common language runtime once the instructions are passed to the clr then we get the final output this is how the compile time phase of a c sharp program looks when it comes to the runtime phase of a c sharp program 
say that we have program.exe which is our intermediate language or assembly. I already mentioned that the instructions are given to the CLR. Now once the instructions are passed to the CLR then the class loader will try to load the definitions based on the metadata information present within the application or the assembly it loads it and then the instructions are passed to the JIT compilers that is our just in time compilers. Once the instructions are passed to the JIT compilers then we get the native code and this native code will be passed for a security check and if any exceptions or security threats are there we will be getting an exception and in case if there is no security violations or exceptions are there then we will be finally getting the output this is what the runtime phase once we understood how this is working now let's move more in detail about the assembly as well as if I try to disassemble the assembly what exactly happens. Now we have something called as intermediate language assembler or MSIL assembler. It is used to generate a portable executable file from a MSIL. Similarly, we have something called as ILDASM which stands for Intermediate Language Disassembler which is used to make a portable executable file to make as a MSIL and creates a text file based on this. Now let's try to understand once your C program is compiled as an assembly how we can able to deassemble that make some changes to the assembly and then we'll try to reassemble that with the support of IASM. Now let me try to open my visualstudio.net command prompt. I just open as an administrator. If you can recollect our programs are written in D colon. So let me just try to quickly move to the folder. Our program is written within program.cs. If you can just try to observe it, it's quite a simple program. A comment saying that my first C sharp program or uh, using statement to refer the console class directly, a namespace, a class program within that, an entry point where I have a simple message to display welcome to C sharp world. Now, when we try to op uh, use a Visual Studio .NET, uh, we can compile the program and execute the program there itself. If you wanted to compile the program there also, internally it uses a compiler with the name called as CSC, where it will take the file name as a parameter and it will try to compile your program. Once this has been done, it will generate a file with the name called as program dot exe which is your assembly or your intermediate language now if i just want to understand what is this particular assembly going to consist of then we have a command called as ildasm which stands for intermediate language disassembler for this particular tool if I try to pass the source as an assembly, then we can just understand what exactly that assembly consists of. So we had a namespace with a name called a CS intro, which has a class with a name called as program and a main method, which is having some message like welcome to C sharp world. Now, this tool can also be used for generating a flat file or a text file based on the intermediate language source code. If I wanted to do that, I simply say ILDASM. I pass the source file as program.exe and I wanted to put this output to a file with the name for example program.il. This program.il is going to be the intermediate language source file in a text format.
Now, if I just try to open this, since it is a text file, I use my notepad to open this file. We can just try to observe it. It's written with the support of a Microsoft Intermediate Language. This assembler, where you see an assembly with the name program and a module. And we have a class with an entry point name. And we have a welcome to c -Sharp world. If you want, we can also update this particular messages or the code. So if I wanted to update it, for example, let me update this code as welcome to c -Sharp .net programmers world. I just try to update this intermediate language code. Once I updated this, this is in a text file where you cannot execute this thing. If you wanted to execute, I need an assembly file. And in order to generate an assembly based on the intermediate language code, we have a command with the name called as ILASM, which stands for Intermediate Language Assembler. For this, I have to specify the source. In this case, the source is going to be program.il. Now, what I try to do is, I just wanted to generate this program.il which is in a text format to an assembly file. So I say slash out colon program.exe. So this particular command is going to convert this intermediate language code to the program.exe. Now if I try to execute this program.exe, now you can see a message called as welcome to shishap.net programmers world. Where the same thing, if you just try to observe it earlier, I was getting a message with the name called as Welcome to C Sharp World. So, with the support of intermediate language disassembler, we can disassemble an assembly and understand the functionality. And then, with the support of intermediate language assembler, we can able to reassemble that particular Hope you are cleared with the basic introduction about how c -sharp program is written, compiled and executed and how an assembly is internally stored, how we can make the changes to the assembly and how we can able to reassemble. Hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed in preparing this video. For any details, you can contact shishop.netprogrammers.com. Thank you.